everyone, it's me, Pluto. So, so, so we've never done a class about art, and I thought since lots of people have been staying at home this past year and, and exploring the creative drawers in their thinking boxes, arts could be a fun topic. Also, also, uh, this past year, I think you have all been Olympians of patience and endurance. So I thought I would talk about art and the Olympics. Did you even know that art, it used to be an Olympic event? It's totally true. Baron Pierre de Coubertin, who was the founder of the IOC and, and, and considered the father of modern Olympic Games, good old Pierre, he really loved the idea that true Olympians were athletes and artists. So, so, so between 1912 and 1948, medals were, were awarded for sport-inspired works of architecture, music, painting, sculpture, and literature. It was called the Pentathlon of the Muses. <laughs> That's a pretty cool name because, because those muses, those, those were a cult of nine sister goddesses in Greco-Roman mythology. And they had their festival every four years with a contest in singing and playing. Whoa, it's like the game of games for goddesses. Anyways, anyways, over those years, Olympic art juries, they awarded a total of 151 medals to original works in the fine arts. And, and, and Walter Winnis, he was the very first Olympic gold winner in art. He, he, he already won a gold and a silver medal in sharpshooting. And in 1912, he won a gold for sculpturing. American Trotter was his bronze that took home a gold. <laughs> so, so also that year, the sculptor Rembrandt Bugatti, he also competed in the Olympic art race. And, and, and he was a pretty famous Italian sculptor and a pioneer of the Art Deco movement. He, he, his dancing elephant sculpture, it appears on the radiator cap of the Bugatti Royale, which is a super snazzy car designed by his famous brother, Ettore Bugatti, who is considered an artist of automobiles. Anyway, anyway, in 1924, Igor Stravinsky got asked to judge the music competition, but picky old Igor, he decided nothing was good enough and he refused to award any medals at all. Huh, maybe that's why he never got asked to compose for Bugs Bunny. Anyway, so for sure, art, it, was, it, it really wasn't one of the big Olympic events, but, but in the 1932 Games, nearly 400,000 people visited the Los Angeles Land Exhibit where all the pieces were being judged at the museum. John Russell Pope, he was the architect of the Jefferson Memorial. He won a silver medal in architecture for his design of the Payne Whitney Gymnasium. That's, that's one of the biggest gyms ever built, and it's at the Yale University. After the war, Avery Brundridge, he was the big boss of the IOC. He said he wanted the Olympics to be completely pure and not to be swayed by the weight of money. <laughs> like that would ever happen. Anyway, anyway, after 1948, they got rid of the artists because they were not considered amateurs because they relied on selling their art for their livelihood. John Copley of the Britain Land, he won, he won one of the final art medals. He was 73 years old and he would be considered the oldest medalist in Olympic history if his victory still counted. But they erased all the art medal winners from the all-time Olympic medal standings. You, you, you two-leggeds, you, you seem to like to use your history eraser sometimes. Anyway, anyway, now you have some good art and sport conversation starters for the weekend. Maybe you could have an Olympic macaroni art event. <laughs> Go for the gold today, everyone. Bye.